I just want to start off by uh, personally thanking John Robinson and his family uh, for their care and, and effort and support that they've shown the, the team and our fans for the past seven years. I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to lead this football team on the field, to coach it uh, each and every day. Uh, and with that, obviously, change is um, never easy, but we, we realize that we all have a job to do. Uh, that job is evaluated uh, each and every day. Um, I, I told the team this. I met with the, all the staff and that, you know, you know, we have a personal relationship with John, everybody here in some capacity. Um, and, and so our, our personal feelings aren't what's important. Uh, what's important is that we respect and understand the decision and that we, you know, move forward um, aligned and do everything that we can to prepare our, our players and, and be great for them uh, as we go out against the Jaguars at home uh, with a division team. Mike, to follow that up, mm -hmm. are you going to have more control and personnel decisions moving forward? Ryan and I, uh, Ryan Cowden and I, um, will um, you know, continue to communicate in, in that process as we you know, get down the stretch of trying to you know, figure out the active roster uh, the players that are looking to return from injury. Um, you know, we, we've made a, a, a couple moves here. It's late in the season, so it's you know, usually some guys uh, from somebody's practice squad. Uh, so that, that, that process, um, you know, isn't going to change. Where's Amy, Mike, and why in uh, heels is such a massive move? Would she not uh, come, come to talk about it? Well, I think, um, you know, let me just say that you know, we all have tremendous support uh, from Amy, uh, from Kenneth, from Barkley, uh, the uh, infrastructure that they've put in place here with the facilities and the people. Uh, you know, I'm all I'm confident that, you know, we, we have their full support, um, you know, and to do our job and to move forward. Um, you know, they, they, you know, Amy made a decision and made a statement. So all I can say is thanks for her support as we come to work each and every day. You had mentioned moving forward uh, fully aligned. Uh, how You had mentioned moving forward full, fully aligned. Was there a degree where you guys weren't aligned? No, no, no. I mean, I just, you know, I think uh, I want to be very conscious of that, um, you know, with, with every department and every person in this building, um, whether it be the, the, the football team, uh, the, the equipment staff, the coaching staff, the personnel side, I, I'm just very conscious of that um, and, and want to be uh, respectful of anyone's you know, personal feelings is you know, the time that John spent here. That, that's all uh, my focus is and just making sure that those, those are understood and, you know, but also res respect um, the decision and make sure that you know, we're, we're doing our jobs better today than we did yesterday for the players. So as far as you and John in, in the John and I have a, John and I have a great relationship. Um, I spoke with him at length uh, last night and um, thanked him, thank, thanked him for, for, for the opportunity, like I said, to coach this football team and to lead this football team. I asked him if there was anything that, that he wanted me to share with the players, um, which I did. You know, because the timing of it, you know, I know that, you know, there were things that he, he wanted to thank the players, you know, for their efforts. And, and, you know, he saw them each and every day. You know, he signed, signed them, he drafted them, um, and, and thanked them for, for what they, you know, went through. You know, and he sees the injury report the same, same as I do. And he knows that, you know, they go through a lot. And so he wanted to thank them. Uh, and, and I did that. How much did the, uh... I guess the way the game went down in Philadelphia Sunday, did that have any impact at all on the timing of this decision? Um, you know, I, I know that Amy informed me of the decision, and I, I, don't, I can't speak to the timing of it. I can't speak to the decision of it. Um, you know, so I, I'm sorry I can't help you. I think those are things that Amy could speak to, which lends again to the question is uh, where, where's Amy right now? Well, I, I can't. I'm not going to speak to her whereabouts. I think that I can only express the uh, support uh, that she's given us, uh, given me as the head coach, and 
the communications uh, that we've had since uh, this decision. Mike, what do you think the message uh, that is being sent here from Amy to you all, but also to the players right now? Um, I, I think the message is the same as it's always been, is, is we're charged to, to, to win, to, to we're here for, to, to win championships, that we all have a job to do, that we're held to a high standard, and that, that we're evaluated uh, each and every day on that job. And that's the same thing I told the football team and the players um, this morning. She said that the roster construction was, was one of the major reasons. Did, were there people drafted and signed here who you did not want? No. I, I, again, John and I have and had a great relationship. He uh, you know, included, I appreciate how he included the coaching staff um, in, in the evaluation process. Uh, ultimately, I reported to John. John was the general manager. We communicated each and every day. Um, so the, our focus was on the roster as it stands today, the guys that we have, um, the players that we're moving forward with to get ready for Jacksonville. Like that roster construction was as much yours as his or almost? I, I think that we're, we're all in, involved. Everybody here in this building you know, is, um, is responsible to, to do everything that we can to help the players and make sure that I, I'm doing my job to prepare them and, and make sure that the message is clear, the keys to, to victory each and every week, and how we need to play uh, to win the football game. I'm sorry? Do you feel like you had enough involvement in the construction of this roster right now? Uh, my focus is clearly on the Jacksonville Jaguars. It is like, how, what do we need to do? Who's going to be available um, to, to look back and, and to reflect? Um, my, my job was to do everything and to support the, the, the personnel staff wherever I could, um, to make sure I coordinated the coaching staff and ultimately get the, the players prepared. That, that goes on this week. You know, I mean, that, this is, you know, again, the, the timing and the change is, is never easy. We recognize that. You know, we're, we're looking forward to it. The players had an unbelievable attitude. You know, they're looking forward to, to getting back into football you know, after having, having lost. And, um, you know, we try to explain to them that, you know, we started the season 0-2. We won seven of the next nine games. Um, we lost the, the two losses were against the teams that played in the AFC Championship game. After nine quarters, we lost two games by seven points. Uh, and we went on the road and got beat by, by a better team. And so I want to try to keep things in perspective. I've asked them to do the same thing and understand where we are and the opportunity that lies in front of us. You just look back there, doesn't this, this is a massive move for 20 minute conversation uh, off of the Jaguars, that's a fair question. Did you have enough input in, into the uh, My message is to the, to the players. You know, that, that's my yeah. focus each and every day um, is about them and how I teach them and, and the message that I try to convey uh, to them and, and whatever um, happened or whatever was in place. Um, the only thing that matters now is what we do going forward. Mike, was this move a surprise to you? Uh, again, change is, is never easy. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm focused on um, where we're at right now. I, I think that, you know, there's surprises that happen each and every day. I respect the decision that, that Amy and, and the ownership group made. I, I appreciate their support as we move forward to, to, to play the Jaguars. How much input do you have on uh, who they name as the new GM? Uh, I, um, I think we'll have, I would imagine, I don't know, we'll have conversations. I'll support uh, them and, and help in the process however I can. We haven't had those conversations. Um, yeah. So my focus, again, is now on, on today and where we're at. I, 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 I will absolutely um, fill whatever role or help in any way uh, when the time comes. What, what role did you have? You and Ryan? What if any role did you have in the evaluation of John and Ryan? <coughs> what role did I play in? I mean, did you assist them at all in the evaluation? You, you evaluate the entire roster here in the team. Did you help at all in their evaluation of John? No, I was informed of the decision, um, and, and not this. This wasn't up. A decision that was um, that included me. It was a decision that was made, um, 
you know, and I was informed of that decision. Who has final <clears> say on the roster between you and Ryan? I mean, I think ultimately um, a- Amy does. Um, I would say that, you know, we're, we're just trying right now to work forward or to, to see where we're at with, with the guys to finish the season. You know, we, we've signed guys. We've brought guys in. We've signed John Reed, um, Terrell Basham before that. I, I don't see that as being something that's even, you know, any sort of issue. You know, I mean, we're, we're trying to find some guys out there that so, may help us going down a stretch. If there was an issue, though, that you and Ryan disagreed upon, whose decision would be the decision that ends up being made by the club? I would imagine that, that Amy, the person that makes every um, – that would have the final say in, in every decision if, if we disagreed, and that's where, where we would leave it at. If it's a matter of personnel, <clears throat> like signing a linebacker or something? I think we would consult, you know, with, with with the ownership group, and you know, I think we would come to a collaborative. Right now, at this point in time, we would come to, you know, a collaborative agreement. I mean, this isn't, you know, I, I hate to say that, <clears throat> you know, it, it's going to be the different. I, I just I don't think that that's going to come up right now in December. In, in the past, you have made comments along the lines, and I'm not saying word for word what you said, but along the lines of you could only coach the players that are provided to you, that could be interpreted as frustration with the roster. So I want to ask you. Yeah, I would, I would, charge, you to fi- I would charge you to find that. Um, my job, like I told you, each and every day is to, to find the guys, that, the, the guys that we have, find ways to, to make them better and to reach them on a personal level, to teach, to develop, and inspire them to do their job, to make a personal connection with them. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think, and I would – hesitate to say that that's something that I said. Um, so I'm excited, excited about the new guys that we've, we signed, that we're going to get ready to play in this game on Sunday. That's what we've always done, find 48 guys somehow, some way uh, to get ready to go win. Paraphrasing it was something like, <clears throat> this is how we have to play with what we have. Or to Ed Werder, who the hell would we throw it to if we wanted to throw it a bunch? Again, I don't know where your question is. Um, the question is, were you restricted by the personnel that you had? No, that's coaching. You know, that, that, that's coaching is, you know, figure out who's available, who you have, and find ways to, uh, to win the football game. We're, we're charged to win, um, and, and that's, that's all we've ever tried to do is take that approach, um, put ultimate importance on the players and, and trying to teach them, understand what wins in this league uh, week to week. And, and, and for the most part, we've done a pretty good job at it. And, and it has to continue to improve. It has to be better uh, in, in all areas. The other major <clears> hindrance <throat> the roster's had has been on account of injuries, which are out of whack with the majority of the league in terms of numbers. Is there a point at which you're determined to get to the bottom beyond bad luck of what's gone on with this team and injuries that's put you in position to have such roster strength? Yeah, we'll evaluate everything. Um, you know, to, to try to make sure that, you know, there's nothing more important than the, the health and safety of our football team. Um, you know, we'll make sure that, you know, we evaluate everything that we do and who's, ha- who's suffering the injuries, where are they occurring, and, uh, and how best to, one, avoid them if you can, and two, uh, treat them when they occur. Do you expect to have the same level of input, Mike, with the new GM or more on personnel matters? Uh, you know, my focus today is trying to, to, to get this team ready for the Jacksonville Jaguars when, when those conversations come up. And if I'm asked, then we'll have those conversations. But I, I'm, I'm focused on making sure that we have a great walkthrough, that we go out there to practice, that we get going on these individual drills to fix the, the technique and the details and the fundamentals um, that show up when we win and uh, make sure that they um, – Try to execute the keys and, and work through practice. John Robinson, John Robinson was fired. John Robinson was fired yesterday. So, so your focus today on the Jaguars is is kind of misplaced in terms of of what the news event for the organization is. It's not an unreasonable question to to want to know what what your input level would be with the new new GM. Uh, I think it would because it's not my input hasn't been asked and. I don't think that that process has started, to the best of my knowledge. So, um, I re- 
Yeah, I, I, I would imagine. I would imagine that it that it would. And um, but I, I know what my job is. I know what I um, came here to do today, and that that's where my focus is. Have you had time to sit down with Amy yet? And if not, do you have any plans here in the near near future? Yeah, we've had conversations uh, extensively yesterday, and uh, again, appreciate the support and appreciate the direction and also her leadership uh, that, that she's shown us, and, um, you know, excited to, to see her Friday if, if um, you know, if she can come to practice and, you know, when she's in town. Was she adequately informed on the AJ trade? I'm sorry? Was Amy adequately informed ahead of time on the AJ trade? I, I didn't have conversations uh, with Amy, so I can't speak to that um, and, and how that process went. That wasn't um, that wasn't something that I did. She was in the room, correct? Amy was was yeah, I think, to the best of my knowledge, in, in the draft room, and so you know, that's I I can't answer that. Are you guys talking the, openly about the AJ trade in the room? Um, you, you know, I mean, there's. I would say that those conversations um, happened between, you know, John, who was the general manager, and Amy, and whatever ownership group, and whatever direction that they wanted to go. You know, that's, that's how those things happen. You know, when you sign players on free agency, or you make trades, or you draft players. You said at the time that you were on board with the AJ trade when it happened, and that you and John had talked about it and shared a wall. Do you still feel that way about the AJ trade? I, here, here's what I feel. I feel like, you know, to, to look back in the past and second guess, like, we're, guys, we, we made a decision and that we felt like was in the best interest um, of the football team and, you know, the decision in that we wanted to head at the time. And so, you know, AJ's in Philadelphia and we're moving forward. We're moving forward, of course. You know what I mean? Like, we all – you know, again, there, there's decisions, and then when you make decision, decisions, you respect them, and you make sure that, you know, again, we find ways to, to prepare the players to win and that we ultimately win and that we're doing our job and that we're held to a high standard. Just to clarify, Mike, then, you were in the discussions to some extent at that time on the AJ trade? I, I'm pretty much, you know, in my history here, uh, have been aware, um, I would say, of almost – Everything that's, you know, happened on a personnel standpoint. There's been, you know, John and I, again, have a great relationship, had a great professional relationship. Um, and that, that's, you know, that's how things work. Discussions with, I mean, your discussions with Amy, what's the sense you got for why now? And would you have rather this happen to after the season? Th th those aren't things that I needed to, you know, ask. It was, I'm prepared and to, to put a plan in place to work with Ryan, uh, to support the staff, uh, everybody, each and every department, um, the, the best that I can, and, and most importantly, put the players, put the players first, when what they makes, what they need. When she makes a decision like that, clearly she wants something to change in the direction. Did she ask you to do anything different or more than you're currently mm -hmm. doing? No, I just continue to lead uh, how I see – and what I think is best for, for the players each and every day, uh, for this staff each and every day. How long have you been made aware of Amy's, I guess, frustrations with the roster? Has that been something she's been in communication with for a long time? No. I mean, we, we – um, I, I was informed, you know, yesterday is of her decision. And that's, that's how, you know. And then we moved forward. Then and I, you know, started – discussing and they met with Ryan and we moved forward and tried to get everything going, met with the staff and, you know, expressed to them, you know, the same things that we've said, you know, since I've been here is you have a personal relationship with John, but we also have a professional responsibility to this football team, to the players, to the organization, uh, to do our job um, as well as we can do it. <coughs> separating the emotions, especially with everything going on as you get ready for the Jaguars. How difficult has it been to separate those emotions the last 72 hours? Um, it's 
you know, I don't know if it's been difficult. It's been something that I've had to certainly manage. And again, I appreciated the phone call with John uh, last night. Um, appreciated it a lot, you know, and I just was, you know, after figuring things out yesterday and working through everything, you know, just to be able to call him, thank him, you know, check in on the girls and um, share his message with the football team. You know, I think this morning being around the players certainly um, helped and um, we're, we're, we're excited to move on and get, get practice going. Well, you thank you. Thank you. Who not only coaches the team but also runs the personnel department and picks the players. Big picture. Am I qualified enough to do what? Do you think you're qualified enough to be one of the head coaches in the league that not only runs the coaching side of the team but also picks the players and runs the personnel department? Yeah, I'm. I'm right now. I'm qualified to uh, try to put a plan in place uh, with our players this week. That, that's where my focus is. And, and I'm not going to think about what may or may not happen, what involvement I would have in you know, whoever uh, they choose to hire. My, my focus is on the football team. And again, today has been great to get these guys in here to have a conversation uh, and then begin our preparation. What was their reaction? Thank I'm sorry, what was their reaction? Like you said what the message was. How did they react to it? Um, like, like they always do, you know I mean? Pretty. Resilient, and you know what, what's what's next. You know how how do we win? How, how do we? Uh, who's going to be available? Who's playing X? Who's playing Z? Who's playing corner? Who's playing inside linebacker? What's the plan? What do we have to do on special teams? How do we go down there and cover kicks against Agnew? Uh, how do we not you know have penalties in the kickoff? How do we get this kickoff return and punt return jump started? You know how do we get into a rhythm and a flow? Uh, offensively, how do we score touchdowns in the red zone without making uh, small mistakes that are magnified down there? You know, being a yard short on a route or ball starting on a third and one, how do we not give up big plays on defense with a team that's young and fast, it's got a lot of speed? That, that's where their focus is. How much, I guess, were the players told, uh, you know, after, after this happened, and, and you in particular being here because of John what's your what's your reaction to the to the situation yeah surprised by it obviously um, you know I think, I think you're always gonna be surprised by something like that but um, you know thankful to John and, and him giving me the opportunity to come here you know uh, so that's something that I'll always remember and and I'm grateful for the work he put in for this organization and and for me personally just giving me the opportunity to come here have you gotten a chance to talk to him I did I talked to him yesterday um, you know great, great to be able to talk to him but uh, just a tough situation how tough is it when a move like this happens in the midst of, it's December and you're in the midst of a game week? Uh, is How easy is it maybe to flip the switch and suddenly focus on the professional side and getting ready for Sunday? Yeah, it definitely adds another layer to the uh, to the week. But uh, as professionals, we have to be able to uh, to get past it. You know, we face all types of adversity throughout the, the, the season and, and different distractions that come up, you know, through different reasons. And uh, as professionals, it's our job to be able to, you know, put that stuff aside and focus on the task at hand and, and being able to prepare and go out and, and play a, a great game on Sunday. You say you want to put that aside and focus on the task at hand, but how much does a move like that kind of like send a message to you guys in the locker room like, hey, you know what, got to get better and got to do better. Yeah, of course. I mean, that, that, that's it's professional football, right? So, you know, we see it every week for, through guys coming in the, in the building and then out of the building. You know, it's, um, it's so different. It affects their lives just like it affects, you know, a coach or a GM or, or anything else, you know. So um, it's definitely a business, and, and we're reminded of that each and every week. You know, this week, just, uh, you know, a different person than, than we were expecting. Do you understand this from a player's perspective, given that you guys are 7-5? and five. You haven't had a losing record since you've been here or John's been here. Yeah, honestly, it's not my job to try to understand it. You know, um, whatever whatever cards you're dealt, you know, you, you're supposed to uh, you know, play those cards the best way you can. And um, that's, the, that's the direction that the ownership group and Miss Amy wanted to, to go in. So as players, you know, we don't have to understand. That's her prerogative, and, and she's trying to do what she thinks is best, you know, for the organization. So... Um, at the end of the day, as players, we just have to focus on, on preparing and going out and playing a great game on Sunday. Two weeks ago, it was the Todd Downing situation. Now this. Do those distractions take a toll in the locker room? 
I mean, you hate to say, uh, hate to say that they affect you at all, but they do. You know, anytime anything comes up, uh, it affects you to a certain degree. But like I said, I uh, have to be able to acknowledge it, you know, realize not, we're not dumb, right? You have to acknowledge what's going on. But uh, at the same time, you know, set it to the side and, and focus on the things we can control. And that's getting ready to go play a football game against a, a talented young football team. You know, they have, have player, good players all around on defense. They're flying around. Um, we've got a lot of speed, um, big, long edge guys on, on, on the outside. Uh, corners are, are playing fast. Linebackers are young and flying around. So I have a lot of respect for them, and we're going to have to go play well. How much pressure do you put on yourself as a leader to keep this team moving in the right direction in the midst of all this? Yeah, no question. That's a, that's a big... Um, a big task for me, you know, but just personally, I take it on, take it on, and, and want to uh, to excel on that. Just making sure we're coming out, we're we're locked in when we step foot on the uh, on the practice field. We're taking uh, the messages from the meeting rooms out to the practice field, keeping that energy, keeping that focus. You know, especially coming off you know two weeks, where we weren't our best, right? So we want to be able to to bounce back, and to do that means attacking the meetings, focusing, taking it out to the practice field, uh, learning from the the details that we missed, and and being able to execute better. You know, come Sunday. How much, you checked in? how much you checked in on Ricey just over the last um, you know couple of months, and how good will be to kind of get him back on the practice field? Yeah, I look, look forward to getting Ricey back out there. Um, you know, constantly kind of checking in on him, see how he's how he's doing, how he's feeling, and that that long process. You know, uh, no one likes being out, and, and Ricey uh, didn't either. So um, exciting to see the progress. You know, he was making over the past you know month or so as he kind of you know increased his his rehab process a little bit. Um, and um, you know, excited to, to get him back out there. I know he can maybe take somebody deep with him, but the, the fans maybe need to be aware of, of counting on him to be some kind of savior when he's got two career catches. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I, I like Racy a lot, and uh, you know, we'll see we'll see how he fits what we want to attack with him. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a he's a big, strong, fast guy. Uh, got a lot of range, and um, you know, was having a good camp. You know, before he went down with the injury, so. Um, you know, we'll see where he's at exactly as he, you know, fits back into uh, into what we're trying to accomplish offensively, and then go from there. Right, even when the offense was struggling earlier in the season, the red zone was really clicking for you guys. But last, you know, what four or five weeks hasn't been the same. Um, some issues, some thoughts on, on what's going on in the red zone? Yeah, everything's magnified. You know, we, we shot ourselves in the foot a few times, some penalties, got behind the sticks, which always hurts. But you get down there and it's it's magnified just because of the space. You know, you're restricted. So. Um, every every mistake is magnified. Every missed opportunity is magnified. So uh, just have to, to execute cleaner and and not shoot ourselves in the foot. And, and ultimately, I think we only got down there, you know, one time in uh, in the red zone this past game. So got to get more shots on goal. And that's getting down in the red zone and then being able to punch it in when we get down there. I know we ask you this every week, but you look like you had your other ankle rolled up on <laughs> in that last. Game. How are both the ankles at this point? Yeah, uh, you know, had to get the matching pair, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, unfortunate situation, but uh, you know, thankfully, uh, I'm feeling all right. So, you know, um, dealing with it, trying to trying to get it get it right as we move forward. But um, you know, I'm encouraged. After all that running, too, the right one. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's good. You know, felt like I uh, finally able to to kind of be myself a little bit, and move around, and then unfortunately got rolled up on the other side. But uh, sometimes that's just the way it goes. There is right, another week, another big the, uh, play. Uh, another week, another big play from a conquo. I know, uh, you know, Coach Downing has said he wants to get get him the ball. You said you want to target him more. What is it that you guys could do to get him more targets? I know the snaps increase, but he needs more targets. I would, I would, I would think, right? Yeah, he's doing a good job. You know, you look at you know what he's been able to accomplish with his opportunities over the course of the year. And it seems like you know, every time he gets an opportunity to touch the ball, you know, he's doing something with it. So I uh, have a lot of confidence in him and and his his uh, you know output in our offense is growing as as. Um, as is his playtime, you know. So I think those those will go hand in hand, and and we'll keep just trying to uh, to progress him along as we move forward. There is something at stake in this game. I mean, you guys can eliminate the Jags and all but lock up the division on Sunday. So what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, that you guys have something at stake in this one. This is a big one, isn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, every every game is a big game, uh, especially against a division opponent at home. You know, get to go back go back out in front of our own fans. So, um, you know, definitely a game that we want to go out and, and play well, especially you know coming off of what happened last week. So, uh, get things uh, going on the right track. Brian, the decision yesterday is obviously a big picture decision within the organization, but for you guys in the locker room, do you feel like you're supposed to take a message out of the decision yesterday to how you're playing or what you need to do the rest of the season? <laughs> I think. Th the guys in the locker room understand the pressure, and we're reminded of it, like I said, daily um, on, on what's at stake. And 
and how this organization expects us to go out and play and, and win games. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's an overall message. Um, if, if there is, then, um, you know, it's something that we're constantly reminded of, you know, on a daily basis. Do you let yourself think about what a new GM could mean for your future here, kind of with a new contract coming soon? No, right now I'm just focused on going out and beating Jacksonville. Um, and I've said it a couple times, you know, I try to focus on what's, what's right in front of me. And I think that's going to be important for us this week as players with a lot going on is focus on what's right in front of us, take care of the task at hand, and that's being Jacksonville. Ryan, how confident are you that, you know, the production issues that you had last week in Philly can be corrected going forward? Uh, Got to be confident. You know, I think uh, it's going to be crucial to, to our success as we move forward. You know, I think there were some good things in that game. And then, you know, as the game got on, they got a little bit hot on, on the uh, D-line side. So I'm uh, going to just have to be consistent, you know, throughout a, a full game and, um, and build on the good things that we did in that game. How much input do they give you in terms of not necessarily the game plan, but in terms of trying to improve the protection around you? Are there, are there things that you go over in the game plan with Todd and with Pat that says, I think this will work, I don't think that will work in terms of protection? Yeah, it's a it's a group effort, right? You know, uh, Todd and Keith and Tim they, they sit down and and go through everything and, and kind of get an outline of, of uh, their initial thoughts and, and what we like protection wise. And then as a week goes on, we make a few adjustments, whether it's things they see or things I see. You know, we're constantly looking to to find ways to help our guys and and ultimately help our offense go out and, and play well. Last one, Ryan. Just to clarify, um, did Amy didn't speak to you? It was Mike Vrabel. Yeah, I did not talk to Miss Amy. Okay. No. Thank you guys.